703 and move to roll call. Commissioner Cargill. Oh, you're opposite. Uh, Commissioner Lively. Here. Commissioner Brown Duncan. Here. Uh, Commissioner Cole. Here. And Chair Daniel. Here. Okay, we will move to uh, public comment. Uh, we'll start with Terry Grimm. If you please come to the microphone and state your uh, address. And you've got three minutes. Hi, Terry Grimm, 227 Twelve Carnet Drive. First, thank you all for your time and your commitment, especially to this board and your community, considering that every time you guys meet, it's usually under some form of controversy. Um, we're here tonight because Councilman Tanner Rose publicly filed an ethics complaint against Councilwoman Patty Martinez for allegedly using her political position for personal gain. It is, in my opinion, to the best of my knowledge, Councilwoman Martinez did what she felt was the right thing to do and asked for permission to have her wedding at the pavilion in the park at Brushy Creek Park. She was given the authorization, filed the paperwork, and as anyone else would have, the dues were paid, so she continued to plan her special day with the venue secure. What happened after that and any judgment calls made were not only out of her control, but out of her legal capacity as an elected official. Our city charter prevents our elected officials from hindering or getting involved in day-to-day -day operations. See section 3.08 subsection C of the city charter. This includes giving any staff members direction. Therefore, Councilwoman Martinez is not responsible for the decisions to allow her to have her wedding and or not allowing any other to have their wedding there. This responsibility is solely, and I mean solely, on city manager Otis Jones as he is responsible for his staff, which he makes very clear every day. In my opinion, not even the employee is to blame for this so-called mistake as they more than likely passed on the information that was given to them, which I'm still trying to figure out why anyone would be denied the beauty of that area. Filing an ethics complaint on Councilwoman Martinez on this matter would be just the same as me filing one on Councilman Tina Rose for filing that ethics complaint outside normal business hours, filing it from that dais and outside of an agenda item all of which he was allowed to do because of his political position. Neither the above statements on his part or in Patty Martinez's is an abuse of power. Regardless of how this may go, please be fair and be just. You'll have my respect either way. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and we've got a request for uh, Mr. Fowler. I believe you want to speak afterwards. Is that allowable? He wants to speak after the presentation, uh, 5A. Or does he need to go right now? Am I on? Um, I would say the time for public comment is listed as before everything okay. um, happened. So I would say this is the time for comment. Uh, Mr. Fowler, would you like to present right now or would you like to? I, I respectfully decline if I can hear, hear the information first and, and then provide an intelligent conversation. Okay. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, so uh, with that, we will move to uh, ag agenda items four, starting with 4A, consideration and possible action on electing an, ele an ethics review commission chair. I move that we leave it as it is with Russell. Do we have a second? Second. Call for vote. Commissioner Lively? Yes. Commissioner Brown Duncan? Yes. Commissioner Daniel? Yes. Commissioner Cole? Yes. Okay. Uh, moving to uh, item 4B consideration and possible action on electing an ethics review commission vice chair. I'd like to make a motion that Ms. Lori Brown Duncan uh, be the vice chair. Second. Call for vote. Commissioner Lively? Yes. Commissioner Brown Duncan? Yes. Commissioner Daniel? Yes. Commissioner Cole? Yes. Okay, then we move to item 4C consideration of possible action on the June 12, 2018 Ethics Review Commission meeting in minutes. And I would like to make a motion that we would table that agenda item. I second. Call for vote. Commissioner Lively? 
Yes. Commissioner Brown Duncan? Yes. Commissioner Daniel? Yes. Commissioner Cole? Yes. All right, with that, we move to, I think, why we've come here tonight, uh, the preliminary hearing, uh, item 5A, consideration and possible action concerning an ethics complaint dated August 1st, 2019, filed by Tanner Rose, City Council, regarding Patty Martinez. Uh, so before we get going tonight, what I'd like to do is to lay out some ground rules for how this uh, will proceed. Uh, so this is a preliminary hearing. Uh, this is not a final hearing. Uh, so with that, all we are doing tonight is deciding whether or not there is enough information in order to have a final hearing, and if that is the case, then we will set a date for that at a later time. Um, I would like to remind this commission uh, that we are not allowed uh, to talk to either Ms. Mrs. Martinez or Mr. Rose concerning this issue until we have resolved uh, this issue completely and we have either um, dismissed it or uh, completed our final hearing. Uh, so that being said, you may say, hi, how you doing? But you are not to discuss uh, what is on the table here. Uh, so with that, uh, how we're going to do this is, uh, Mr. Rose, I'm going to ask you to come forward and present to us in narrative form uh, your complaint. And from that point, uh, Mrs. Martinez, I see you're here tonight. If you would like to speak uh, at that time, then we will allow you to do that. Uh, there will not be any cross-examination, though, after your presentation. We may have some questions for you. And uh, then this commission will discuss right here in front of you uh, whether we see that this is uh, – we need to go up to a final hearing or not. So um, I hope we all understand the ground rules here. Uh, so, Mr. Rose, I'd invite you to come forward and please share with us uh, your ethics complaint. Can I just do my name and address? Oh, yes, we do need to uh, get you under oath. So, Ms. Hale, would you take that for us, please? Okay, so Tanner Rose, yeah, I live at 207 Watergate Way, Hutto. Um, I'm sure all of you have a copy of the complaint I filed. Um, hopefully you've read it. Um, outside of that, I don't have that much. If you want me to state it just for the record, if that's what you, is that what you'd like? Or? Sure, yeah, just tell us uh, in narrative form uh, what your complaint is and what you're looking for. Okay, so um, just following the form, um, the section I complained about was section 205, 03B, subsection 2. No city official or appointee shall intentionally or knowingly use one's official position or city-owned facilities, equipment, or supplies for pecuniary gain or advantage of said official or appointee or use of city-owned vehicles, printing facilities, postage facilities, or long-distance telephone service for personal reasons, for pecuniary gain or advantage, or in any political campaign. Um, that's a mouthful. So, um... Uh, my complaint um, is basically, you know, Councilwoman Martinez had her wedding um, June 22nd at the park at Brushy Creek. Um, it was my understanding the park had not been open. The park didn't open until July 4th, um, officially to the public. If you remember, um, during the July 3rd meeting, um, one of the council members asked if the park was going to be officially opened and, I guess, kind of spoiled the surprise. And so um, that was kind of the announcement for when the park um, was officially open. Um, I guess um, I know two people from the public asked to use the park. Two different departments told them no. Um, after some questions had been asked, all of a sudden the park was available to be used um, at any said time, um, which begs, you know, why at that time was it changed and how did two different departments have the same um, answer, but then it, it wasn't the right answer. Um, after some light had been put on it. Um, you know, the only other thing I would ask is if, if we want to absolve Miss Martinez of, of the wrongdoing and, you know, you guys make your own decisions, um, you know, I'd be interested how a park that's not open to the public um, was granted access. You know, who gave, that, who gave that call, who made that decision to open those gates and let her have that wedding day there? Um, you know, I, I brought her a big binder up here. 
um, when I got elected this year, this is this is the new council member orientation book they give us. So it's got all the rules, regulations, um, everything we've got. I don't know how many pages are in here. It's obviously quite a lot. And um, you know, the only thing I would state is is you know when we stand up there after we're elected and we take an oath um, that all of us do, and they give us this and say, hey, here are the rules and and ethics that you have to abide by in your position. You're you're no longer just a standard citizen like everyone else is. Um, you have additional things that you have to abide by. And so, you know, it states in the handbook, you know, what the rules are. Whether whether you didn't know or, or didn't understand, is that a reasonable defense? I, you know, I'm not the judge, jury. I filed my case. I gave it to you guys. It's on you guys to do what you believe is best, what you think is right, and... I don't have, you know, much more to add other than that. So, are you guys allowed to ask questions or no? Yeah. Do we have any questions for Mr. Rose? I guess I just have one. So, whenever you say that you don't know that if she knew or not, so what you just read though said intentionally and knowingly. So, does that make a difference in your opinion? I mean, intentionally and knowingly. So, if you're giving this book and you swear an oath that you understand the charter, all of the rules, ethics, and things. I mean, my assumption would be, I mean, I have to knowingly know those things. I mean, I can't say, oh, hey, I broke this rule, but I didn't know it was a rule, so absolve me of any wrongdoing. Um, you know, maybe it's different for ethics than it is for other things, but I'd state not knowing what the rules are isn't much of a case, in my opinion. Was there was there any discussion, to your best of your knowledge, at a council meeting? I, I realize you were just recently elected, so you might not know. But was there any discussion pro at a council meeting uh, about the opening date for Brushy Creek, other than what you had said? Was there discussion on an opening date outside of that July third meeting? Yep. That's the only one I can attest to. If there was stuff done prior to me attending, prior to me being involved in hearing those things, or if it was done even when I was attending and I missed it, I'm not going to state that there wasn't discussion that the park was going to be open sooner or a different date. I, I don't know that to be certain. Okay. I have a couple questions. Um, you stated that there was two people that got denied um, the ability to be able to use that park. Are those two people here tonight? And have you talked to them? Not that I know of. I don't think they're here tonight. Okay, so you didn't actually, you know, find out who those people were to talk to them to actually get a full story? Um, no, I didn't reach out to those people. Okay. Do you have their names? Um, I do. You can say them. Do you want me to say it? Yeah, Stacy yes, Anderson sir. and Casey Borthwick are the names. Can you repeat the second one, please? Casey Borthwick. And who gave you those names? Um, one was on Facebook and one was through email. Okay. Okay, so my second question is, is after reading your, um, your complaint and seeing the pictures, where did you get those pictures from? Was those ones that you pulled off of Facebook or was there... Correct. So... To me, it seems like this is more of a mudslinging thing. I mean, and that's just my opinion, but it seems like it's more of a mudslinging thing. Um, I mean, personally, you can't believe everything that's on Facebook. I mean, and... and so you're denying the wedding date? Leaving, no, I'm not denying anything. So and then what part isn't believable? So what just part isn't believable? Just a minute, okay? This is where you're supposed to be pleading your case to mm -hmm. us, okay? Um... I'm not denying the wedding day, but I, I'm seeing it more of it being more of a mudslinging contest type thing. Um, I think this is just a complete and total frivolous thing. I'm not saying that the staff, it's possible the staff could have made a, mm -hmm. uh, an issue. They could have had a problem. I don't know. We haven't talked to anybody. But personally, I think, I mean, if you're pulling these pictures off of Facebook, I mean, to me, it just seems like it's more of a, a mudslinging 
issue than what the we're supposed to be here you guys are supposed to be representing the citizens doing what's best for the citizens and honestly i haven't seen anything from our newly elected council people i've seen more coming from the ones that are already here than our new ones so you might just want to keep that in mind that citizens are watching where you're getting information where you're getting you know you've got a high a high spot and citizens are really we want to make sure that the citizens get the correct information and not just hearsay off of Facebook or Instagram or anything of that nature. So which part is hearsay? The Let's, Facebook uh, pictures. So here we go. Um, well, and I have one more thing. So if it's frivolous so, excuse in me, this, sir. tell me which one is which ones are frivolous so I can understand. Here, here, here's what we're going to do. Do we have any more questions for Mr. Rose? None for me. None for me. Okay, Mr. Rose, is there anything else you would like to add before your time is ended? Uh, yeah, since it's, I guess this is a frivolous thing, I'd say the ordinance and the charter, if this board could just let me know which ones are frivolous and, and which ones aren't for the citizens at large, which rules need to be followed and which ones don't, I'd say we'd probably all appreciate understanding which ones are important. I believe they're all important. That's why we're here tonight. So thank you very much. Sounds like your testimony begs to differ. <coughs> Mrs. Martinez, would you like to come forward? You have the option. or uh, Okay, come forward. Please tell, tell us in narrative form uh, what you have to say. And yeah, we're going to be under oath here as well. Oh. So you do that first, please. Mrs. Martinez, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good evening. Um, in the initial stages of Planning White Wedding, um, I, in passing, had asked um, when the park would be open to the public. And the date that I was told was June 1st. So I confirmed that if I would like to have the pavilion rented on the 22nd, that, that if it was available, that I could go through that with that process and book it. And I was told that it was available, so I went through the process. We submitted the application, we paid the fees, and it was accepted. To my knowledge, the park had been accessible to our citizens. Um, we, ho we hosted the Huddle Partners meet and greet at the park. We, um, there was a police report for an abandoned vehicle at the park. People were picnicking at the park. Um, all before the 4th of July. So um, I didn't know that there were stipulations against me booking in the pavilion, excuse me, a pavilion that was available. Um, so I don't in any way feel like I used my position or my power. I went through the process just as anybody else would. And it was approved through the city um, and then what happened after the fact with the other residents, I was made aware by the news. They contacted me and asked um, me why other people were being denied usage of the park. Once I retained that information, I immediately emailed Otis and said, you need to handle this. This is not okay. Because the park is open, that pavilion should be available for rental. Uh, that is not the policy. So um, he immediately, excuse me, immediately uh, addressed it with his staff, found out the root of it, um, and to my knowledge, what had happened was there was someone who uh, misunderstood. They were waiting for the event uh, calendar or schedule from the event management company that manages the events for the amphitheater to roll out their dates so that they know when the park would be available or not. What they didn't understand is that portion of the park is available to the public whether or not the um, event, the amphitheater is being used for an event, uh, except for Coke Fest at this time. They have a different contract. So um, I, I followed the process. I did what I was supposed to do. Um, and then once there was an issue, we addressed it immediately, rectified it. The, um, the citizens who had requested to rent that venue um, that were denied were contacted and it was remedied and rectified 
Um, so they are available to use it if the dates are available. Um, so that's pretty much okay. all that I have to say. Um, when you originally asked um, if the park was open, uh, who was your contact point for that? Who told you the park was open on June the 1st? Uh, it was. I was told that it was proposed to be open to the first, and that was with and Tony Host confirmed that we've we've talked in passing. Okay. Tony Host. Okay. All right, other questions? Yeah. Did anyone ever tell you differently after that conversation? Uh, no, I never heard differently at all. To, to the best of your knowledge, and it's the same question I asked uh, Mr. Rose. Did you? Was there discussion within the council at a council meeting if the park would be open or with the date the park would be open prior to July 3rd? Not the council because we are waiting for Tony Host and his uh, timeline on construction on what they with the planning of the grass and the irrigation and um, having the final things of you know finished with the retention ponds and things of that nature. So Tony Host was in charge of the the construction at the park. Yes. And knew, knew the schedule and such? Okay. Yes. I have a couple questions. Patty, did you, um, did you ever go to, to staff and actually ask them no. and tell them, I want to use the park? No. When you submitted the fees and the paperwork, who actually approved that? Uh, <clears throat> that was approved that through Tony Host. Well, I'm sorry, when you say employees, yes, it was Tony Host that I'd given the information to. Was that through the online portal? No. So you filled out a form and handed that to him? Um, I did not fill out a form. He called me because he had um, information, he didn't have information. He was inquiring about when we needed to get that date and everything scheduled and said we need to get the paperwork submitted soon so you could pay the fee in time for me to be able to use the event. So he was walking you through that process? Yes. Is that correct? Okay. Do we have any other questions for Mrs. Martinez? Yeah, I have one more. Right. So basketball we'll together. So did other people on the council know that you were getting married? Yes. Did anyone say, we're not thinking the park's going to be open at that time? Uh, no. Was Mr. Tanner Rose on the council at that time? Um, I know he wasn't because I had started planning in about February, March. So he came on after the wedding? So, so when, <laughs> after the beginning of the process. When did you submit that to Tony, the paperwork? Um, the fee? that was sometime in May, I believe. Okay, so that would have been before Mr. Rose had taken his seat? I think so, yes. <clears throat> okay, do we have any other questions? Okay, Mr. Martinez, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so at this time, we will have discussion, and uh, then we have uh, consideration and obviously possible action concerning this matter tonight and whether we would like to move forward to a final hearing or dismiss uh, the complaint. We're open for discussion. Um, if I could, Mr. Chair, could I just yes. remind you what issue is before you guys today? So the question, according to the Code of Ordinances, is whether reasonable grounds exist to believe that a violation of the Ethics Code has occurred. So I believe in reviewing the documents that there there is um, there is the there's there's really two options. I know we're not to that point, but I think it's important to note that there's two unintentional, if this was an unintentional and not meant to happen, and then there's this was intentional and knowingly happened. I, I do think that it was an unintentional event and that it wasn't probably meant to happen. However, I think it's important that elected officials are aware of the rules and the expectations that are set forth for them. So I feel that there is room there for a final hearing and, and, my, and that's my opinion on that. Yeah, I keep going back to the intentional, but I don't think anything was knowingly and intentionally done by Mrs. Martinez. I, 
I agree with you. I don't think it was intentionally done. I think that once she was directed, she did what she was supposed to do because she was under that assumption that that person knew what they were supposed to do. And once that left her hands, that's up to the city. That's up to the staff to do that. Now, I know from being on the other boards that not everything gets communicated. And I think that's part of what happened is there was a breakdown in communication, but that is not her, her fault. That is the staff's fault. So I think ultimately really, um, and you know, I don't want to be disrespectful or mean, but I don't think Mr. Rose actually did his homework to the best of his ability before he actually brought this complaint to us. Um, I think that if he had talked more and did more research, I think that he would have um, seen that once she did what she was supposed to do, she did the process, but once that process, and that's like with any job, once you do that process, that's out of your hands at that point, and what happens, happens. So I feel like there is not enough grounds um, to even do a final hearing. I think he's maybe putting words in his mouth or something, but his thought behind it probably was I put it before the ethics committee and then let them kind of see where the process takes. Yeah, them. I understand that too, but I do know that, you know, it's also his responsibility to, you know, if he's wanting, if he thinks that there is a violation that you need to be in and be prepared. And I think that he was prepared to a certain amount but I don't think he fully went the full amount, which doesn't give us the full picture of what actually happened. Yeah, I'm not saying they intentionally or knowingly. Um, we don't need to go any further than that. Um, so it sounds like we're ready for a motion. Do we have a motion? I have a motion to um, not proceed with a final. Okay, we have a motion to dismiss, to dismiss. Uh, this ethics complaint. Do we have a second? Second. Call for vote. Commissioner Cole? No. Commissioner Daniel? No. Commissioner Brown Duncan? Yes. Commissioner Lively? Um, no for the final. So, I'm sorry. I, 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 so, okay. we're, 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 we're making we got to There is a motion <laughs> to dismiss. So, a yes is for dismiss, a no is for uh, if you'd like to continue. So, could we do that again? Can we try that again, Ms. Yes. Hale? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Cole? No. Commissioner Daniel? Yes. Commissioner Brown Duncan? Yes. Commissioner Lively? Yes. Okay. With that, the um, uh, ethics complaint has been dismissed and we will adjourn at 7.31 p.m. Thank you guys so much for coming tonight.